We're gonna talk about Christmas this morning. We're gonna talk about Jesus coming. And this is what a lot of times we talk about Christmas as the most joyful time of the year. We look around, I was at the mall yesterday and I was in Dick's and it was insanity. There were so many people running around, people like not social distancing around me. There are presents, there are people shopping, there's Christmas music, there are people rear-ending me and it's nuts. But it's also cool because it's about to be Christmas break. There's like, you know, peppermint mochas. There's all kinds of Christmas stuff. And I love it. And there's Christmas music and it's the most wonderful time of the year. There's just so much wonderful stuff and, and there's so much joy and there's so much happiness. We look at our series, Real Christmas. It's a little pun because it's, we're going to look at some Christmas movies over the next couple of weeks. And I look at this and I think of Advent. Advent is a, a big Bible word and it means the coming. Advent means the arrival. Advent means Jesus came to the world. In Isaiah, the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, they all talk about Jesus' coming. They prophesy about a Savior, a Messiah. And Isaiah says this, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, he will be the Prince of Peace. I think when we hear this every Christmas, maybe you've seen like the, the Christmas plays and we hear this verse and we think about the little baby Jesus swaddled in those white cloths, little baby Jesus in the manger. And we, and we forget because we're just looking at little baby Jesus. We think, oh, cute little baby Jesus in the manger, cute little baby Jesus in, in those little white clothes we kind of forget that he's like the mighty counselor, the government will be on his shoulders, that he came to forgive our sins, that he is God dying on the cross, that we forget that he's the prince of peace, that he is the almighty God, that he is the forgiver of sins. And we kind of just miss that at Christmas time, that he is almighty, that he is the bringer of joy. Joy in 2020 is what? I don't know, but I think it's been hard if we're talking about joy, if we're being honest. And I look out and I'm not wearing this right now because I guess I don't really have to because I'm speaking, maybe I should. But I think this is a good illustration as we talk about joy because I don't see too many smiles right now. Is anyone smiling? Not one hand. When we talk about joy, 2020 has been like a year to be what, forgotten? There's not too many joyful memories. School was canceled. A lot of stuff was canceled. 2020 is a year where you're gonna tell your kids, yeah, it just was kind of crap. It kind of stunk. 2020 was a year where I don't have one joyful memory, one joyful vacation. 2020 kind of stunk. And we think about, this year and joy, I don't have the word up there, but it was really nowhere to be found. And we wanna fast forward to 2021 because maybe in 2021, 2022, that's where I'll get my joy back. That's where happy memories will come. I think about joy and happiness, these two like things. And I think as we start to talk about joy and happiness, I was thinking about this. Joy and happiness are two, two different things. I think about happiness and I think maybe your friend walks into class and smashes a Dutch bros drink right on your desk and goes, I got you, bro. I got you. Wake up. I got you. And you're like, yes, this is going to be a good day. I can make it through now. That's a happy moment, isn't it? For being honest. Or you get maybe an email, you get a notification, your final is canceled. Why? I don't know, maybe because of COVID. That's a very happy moment. Yeah, very happy. You're like, thank you, COVID, you came through. Very happy moment here. Things are gonna be good. That's happiness. Just all wrapped up, early Christmas present for you. Or here's another happy moment. I just looked at my TikTok. I hadn't opened it in like two weeks. I have almost 2,000 views on a, on a TikTok. Very happy moment for this guy. Very happy, yeah, congratulations. Go like it, my most recent post. 
I think that's happy. It wasn't pure joy, but it was happiness. A fourth moment, maybe you walk into math and you've got a substitute teacher because you're like, I don't really like my math teacher. She's, she's kind of a joyless person. She kind of snucks, so I don't really like her. But we have a sub, we can make it through the day. I don't know if she has COVID, but we're just gonna, okay, it's good, I have a sub. That's happiness. And I think as we look at joy and happiness, they're two different things. Happiness is temporary, joy is long-term. And I think for some of us, it's been 2020 and our joy is missing. Adults, maybe a lot of them, their joy is missing. Maybe your parents are like, they haven't had joy in years. Your grandparents are like, I don't think they've ever had joy. I don't know what's going on with them. When we're Christians, the Bible talks about us having this joy, this joy that Jesus can give, a joy that's long-term, really a joy that's permanent. And as Christians, we're supposed to have this joy. I'm gonna look at some scripture today and we're gonna look at the Bible and, and the story where Jesus comes in and, and baby Jesus is born. And it says that as Christians, as believers, even as, it doesn't matter if you're a teenager, it doesn't matter if you're a junior higher, it doesn't matter if you're a fifth grader, you should have the joy, long-term joy, not just for one day, but long-term that Jesus can give. I'm gonna show you how to have that. And I think it starts with being a giver. I think that you have it if you can give it away. I was in Portland going to school. I, a lot of you know, I went to go get my seminary degree and go learn the Bible in Portland. And one night, Christine and I, I, don't, I think we were out Christmas shopping and it, it was very cold. It was probably raining and we had jackets on and we're walking the streets downtown and we're behind this, this family and we're walking the streets and it's freezing out. And I see this family up ahead of us and there's a, a lot of homeless people in Portland and this dad, he walks over to the homeless man. He stops his family and he walks over to the homeless man and he starts pulling off his gloves. And I'll never forget this. Me and Christine kind of stopped and he pulls off his gloves and he hands them to the homeless man who didn't have any gloves on. And the homeless man puts the gloves on and the, the dad said something to the homeless man. And then him and his family walk off and me and Christine looked at each other and I was just overwhelmed. I didn't know what to do. And we said, I mean, that was amazing. The homeless man is kind of, he's freezing. And rubs his hands together. And I was just overwhelmed with this, this feeling of joy. Not happiness, but this feeling of joy. I think in the scriptures over and over again, the Bible says, if you give kindness, you'll receive joy. If you show kindness to non-believers, if you show kindness to believers, if you show kindness to the poor, you're a person who has joy. But here's the kicker, here's the thing, okay? Because that's easy to say, right? Isn't it easy to say, show kindness, show kindness. It's easy to say, isn't it? Show kindness, show kindness. It's easy, but here's the kicker. How many of you, have ever had someone be a real jerk to you? Yeah. How many of you have ever had someone just cuss you out, flip you off, be a jerk to you in class? Like even in the last week, someone texted you, said something about you, and you're like, I'm not gonna be nice to you. You just said that about me. You literally just flipped me off. I can't even do anything nice to you. I was out here on the backfields right out here doing our turkey bowl. This was just last week at Thanksgiving. And I'm out here and it was our championship football game. I put on the ref jersey. I'm refing this football game. And this one kid, he keeps saying, ref, you don't know what you're talking about. And I'm using nice language. I'm using pastor language. This one kid keeps walking up to me. Ref, you don't know what you're bleep, bleep, bleep. F word, F word, bleep, bleep, bleep. You don't know what you're bleep, bleep, bleep. You don't even know who you are. You don't know who I am. And I'm like, whoa. Bro, and I said, and I smiled. I just kept smiling. He kept getting up in my face. I'm like, bro, COVID, bleep, bleep, bleep. And he kept like cussing me out hardcore in my face. He's like, terrible call, ref, bleep, bleep, in my face. And I'm like, dude, this is just a turkey bowl at a church. And I finally said, dude, if you really have that much of an issue with it, I think you should go and sub out of the, out of the game right now. 
after the game and after a lot of cuss words, he walks off the field, his team lost, and his captain comes up to me and he shook my hand and said, dude, thanks so much. I think I'll see you at church sometime. It's good to see you, by the way. And I said, wow, that was really hard to get through. And then I said to my brother, by the way, I, I said this, I said, watch my back. I think that guy might come back and hit me. I was a little afraid. I walked off. Here's what it says in the Bible. It says, rejoice always. Rejoice, this is a weird verse. Rejoice in all things. I stood there, I took it. This guy kept yelling at me, this kid. And I kept standing there and smiling. I wanted to backhand the guy, if I'm being honest with you. And I kept smiling. And I realized if I kept showing him kindness, if I kept killing him with kindness, even though it was one of the hardest things I ever did when he kept yelling the F bomb in my face, I realized, hey, you know what? He's at the Grove. He's probably heard about the Grove. A lot of his friends have heard about the Grove. Maybe this guy who maybe goes to Chandler Gilbert. I don't know where he goes to school. I know he's a college guy. Maybe he'll come back. Maybe he'll meet God. He knows I'm the high school pastor here. Maybe if I just show him kindness, maybe it'll be the only kindness he sees on Thanksgiving. Rejoice always. Here's the thing. Some of us are unhappy because the unhappy people in our lives are yelling at us and being mean to us. And the only way we, we respond is in an unhappy way. Someone's calling you a name and you know how you respond? Oh yeah? Well, you know what you are? Bleep. You know how you look? You look. Oh yeah? Well, you know what? And that's how we respond. And I think instead of responding in those ways, we need to say this. I'm not gonna stoop down to your level because if I stoop down to your level, then I'm just as good as you are. If I come down to this childish level, then I'm just as good as you. So I refuse to step down to that childish level. And some of you, if you're taking notes, which you should be note takers, I refuse to step down to your childish level because your childish level is making you unhappy. Your childish level is making you unkind. Your childish level is actually making you a joyless person. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna be above that. I'm gonna be above that and I'm gonna refuse to do that. And when I do that and when I show you kindness, when I give you the gift of kindness, I'm actually gonna receive joy from that. If you don't take anything away from church this morning, take that away. When we actually look at the story of Jesus coming to earth, we see this happen. It's in Matthew 1. Go to Matthew 1. It's on the screen. And we see Jesus being born. I don't know if I can read that. I might have to read it out of the actual Bible. It says this. The birth of Jesus in verse 18. The birth of Jesus Christ came this way after his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph so she's engaged. It was discovered that before they came together, and for those of you that don't know what that means, it means that they came together. She was pregnant from the Holy Spirit. You have to talk to your parents about that one. So her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided that he was gonna divorce her. This is not a good thing. But after he considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. And we'll pause there. I don't want to go any further. Joseph is upset. Joseph is so upset. And we don't often talk about this. We, we normally skip this part where Joseph is upset. And we kind of go right to the part where Jesus is born. 
But Joseph is so upset, he wants to do what? He wants to divorce her. Why? What's he upset at? Anybody? She's pregnant. But what's he really upset at? Yeah, he thinks it's not his baby. He's really confused at the, like, the situation. And a lot of people are looking at this and scholars have looked at this. They're teenagers. They're like 17 years old. They're seniors in high school. And Joseph is confused. Joseph is looking at Mary. I mean, they're your age. And Joseph is looking at Mary and he's like, okay, she's pregnant. We, we didn't. <laughs> okay. This is confusing and it's not mine. And a lot of their family and friends, and you've maybe never looked at the story this way before, right? But his family and friends now see her pregnant and he's like, no, 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 we didn't. We didn't, I promise. We were wed, we're gonna get wed. We were engaged and I'm a good guy and she's a good girl, but now he's embarrassed and his parents are embarrassed and his friends. So he wants to divorce her. He wants to leave because now people are talking about him. So now what? Maybe he's yelled at her. Maybe he's yelled at her parents. Maybe he's, he's made a fool of himself. Maybe he's been yelling at her sister. We really don't know what's gone on behind the scenes because what? He's angry. So Joseph has started to be an unkind person and at first, as I was reading this story, this is kind of interesting. I thought that he was an unkind person. And I, I was reading this last week and I, and I thought that Joseph came back and Joseph came back to Mary and he started to ask for her forgiveness and he started to be kind to her. But I realized that that wasn't it at all. I started to read it again this weekend and I realized that the roles were, were reversed. I realized that Joseph was a little bit more of a jerk, I think. I think if we read it again, Mary is actually the one that's more kind. Mary's the one that's offering Joseph the kindness, isn't she? She's the one sitting there looking at Joseph and she's saying, you know what, Joseph? This is a miracle baby. This baby couldn't have come any other way. If you wanna be a jerk and leave me, that's fine. But I haven't done anything wrong. If any guy in here, which guys overreact a lot, I've been married and it happens. Any guy has overreacted a million times and Joseph overreacts. What does he do after that? I can just imagine Joseph walking back in like, Mary, I'm sorry. You look beautiful. Now, I know I've acted a fool that I mentioned you look beautiful and uh, this baby, well, I, did I mention your eyes are beautiful? I'm so sorry about all this and the situation. I still want to get married. Did I mention you look beautiful, your eyes, the hair, the whole thing? I mentioned I'm so sorry about all this. Here's the thing about Joseph. He walks in, says she's beautiful. It doesn't say any of this in the Bible, but I can imagine after he's probably yelling at her, he apologizes. I think one of the biggest things about people not having joy is people never asking for forgiveness. People stay joyless for forever because they don't offer forgiveness to one another. Parents, kids, friendships stay broken forever. Maybe you have a friendship that's been broken with people since junior high and you wanna get back and be friends again. Maybe you're not happy right now and you have no joy in your life or your parents because you simply won't forgive somebody. I look at this story and I look at Joseph and I look at him walking in and asking Mary and, I, and just saying, hey, can you forgive me? It doesn't say it in the scriptures. There's nowhere where he walks in and says, can you forgive me? But I can imagine he walks into the house and says, Mary, will you just forgive me? There's this beautiful moment. Here's what I wanna do because I think forgiveness is so important, but I think oftentimes we don't forgive. At your table, I wanna take just one minute, just 60 seconds, and if you're alone, I need you to go to a table. I wanna take 60 seconds and just go around your table and say like two or three reasons why we don't forgive. Like 
What are two or three reasons we don't often forgive people? What are they? We're gonna put a, a timer up. I'll give you 60 seconds. I'm gonna come back in 60 seconds. Reasons why we don't forgive people. Go ahead. You got 60 seconds. Okay. What about this table? What's a reason why we don't forgive anyone? Because people are stubborn. That's a really good one. Back there, I see like two tables. That table. Okay, that table. Anger. Oh, that's a really good one. Reasons we don't forgive, anger. What about this table? Yeah, so just repeating the same thing. Really good. What about this table? Yeah. Almost like a self-righteousness. Justified in the anger. Yeah. Really good. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, feeling like they need to apologize. Yeah. That's a really good one. Anyone else? Okay, so I'm, I'm hearing like almost like self-righteousness, making them say they're sorry, anger, like a bitterness, because they keep repeating the same, the same things over and over again. I was watching Home Alone with Christine this weekend, and in Home Alone, uh, Kevin's having a conversation in the church if you remember that in Home Alone 1, he's sitting in the church next to the old man who's apparently the killer. And they're sitting there and the old man, they're talking about their families, right? And then the old man, his, his family, his son comes up and he's like, I'm here to watch my granddaughter and that's my granddaughter. But I can't have Christmas with my granddaughter because my son is mad at me. And Kevin says, well, why don't you just apologize. And he says, well, it's been too long, and I'm afraid that he won't accept my apology. And he says, well, that's a dumb reason. You shouldn't be afraid. And, and I think about all of these reasons. I'm afraid to apologize, the anger, the, the self-righteousness, the bitterness, the people repeating the same thing over and over. I wrote down a couple of these same things, and I think about all of these reasons. I think they're not bad reasons. I actually think they're good reasons. A lot of these things are, are actually reasons that people hold grudges for a long time. And people will hold grudges from the time they're 14 or 15 all the way up forever. These are reasons people won't talk to their parents all the way until their parents pass away. But here's the thing about forgiveness and anger and bitterness. And I want to tell you this because I think it's so important, especially around Christmas and the holidays and with your family and as it, and as it pertains to joy, because I think this is so important for you to hear. I really think God put this on my heart for you to tell, me, to tell you this morning. When we don't forgive people, we stay mad forever. When you don't forgive someone, you stay mad forever. You stay mad at them forever and you stay mad in general forever. You stay bitter forever. Deep down, you'll stay angry forever. If you don't let that go and if you don't forgive them, you'll stay angry forever. So, and so it becomes a question of will you forgive them? I had a teacher when I was in Portland, one of my seminary Bible teachers, and she ended up telling us her testimony. She told us her whole testimony. And she ended up having a previous husband with all of her kids. And none of us knew this whole story and her whole testimony. And she said that her previous first husband was very abusive. Not just verbally abusive. Not just emotionally abusive, which he was. But he was also really physically abusive to her. And she didn't get into all the details, but she said that he was physically abusive to her and to the kids. But she ended up saying that he couldn't take certain things from her. 
And, and I ended up writing some of this down. And she said, he could take my beauty, he could take my money, my husband, he could take my things from me. But there was one thing that he couldn't take. He could never take my Jesus. He could never take me of, he could never take my joy. Because my joy was the fuel of my Christianity. In Ephesians, it says this. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as Christ forgave you. I'm going to close up, but my question for all of you as we talk about joy and forgiveness today is this. Is there someone on your heart, is there someone in your family that you need to forgive? I think there's always someone that we need to forgive. Maybe someone in your family, your extended family, someone at school that you need to go to, someone you need to text and say, I forgive you. Maybe someone you can go to in person and say, it's okay, I forgive you, I release you of this. When we extend that kindness to someone, when we give them the gift of forgiveness, I think you're gonna rediscover the joy this Christmas that you've been looking for. I think as we all have all gone through this pandemic, a lot of us have really been robbed of joy. I think you've seen it in your families, you've seen it here at church, you've seen it as you've been at school. So many people have been robbed of joy. And I think as you start to go back out there and as you start to show kindness, just like Buddy the Elf, as you start to show people more forgiveness, I think you're gonna to start to rediscover joy like you've never seen it before. Band, you can come on out. I'm gonna go ahead and pray and I want you to close your eyes, bow your heads. And as I begin to pray, what I want you to do is I want you to think of one or two people. Think of that person, maybe it's a family member, Maybe it's someone at school. Maybe it's someone you, you need to text today or this week. Maybe it's someone you want to go to in person. Maybe it's someone you need to write down in your notes that you want to go to. Maybe it's just someone you can show more kindness to. Let's go ahead and pray. God, we thank you for being a God who forgives. No matter what I do, you forgive me. No matter how, how far I walk away, you come and get me. No matter how many sins I commit, you're right there to say, it's okay. I forgive you of that sin. No matter how much I mess up, it's okay. You're right there saying, it's okay, daughter. It's okay, son. I love you. You can't mess up too many times. You're a good God, a kind God, a loving Father, a forgiving Father. Thank you, God, for being so kind to us, for, for being so forgiving to your sons and your daughters. We love you. I pray that you, you give us your Holy Spirit to make us bold so that we can go and forgive people and be kind to people, to make us joyful to people, even when it's hard, even when people are yelling at us, even when parents are mad at us. It's in your name we pray all these things. Amen.